What's up, Sanders? You so glad that you're here with us. Welcome to all of our campuses joining us, listening together. I love that. So tonight, I'm just gonna jump right on in uh, to the teaching part of things because what we're talking about doesn't matter what kind of personality type you are. Doesn't matter uh, what is happening. Is that we we want to like remix our relationships, and we're gonna be talking a little bit about like our dating and future marriages, which sounds weird if you've never really thought about it before. But what I wanna focus on is that when it comes to like healthy uh, future marriages, healthy dating, when it comes to it, is that we need to focus on ourselves first. Most of the time we try to think about finding the right person, but we never think about being the right person for whatever that future is. And so what I wanna talk about is actually healthy friendships First, um, how you can be a better friend because if you're a better friend and have the qualities that you are that you begin to work on about being the right person for whoever that future person is, is that you could actually you know, have healthier dating and marriage in the future. And the things that we're gonna talk about tonight are actually really key when it comes to navigating what healthy friendships are like. And I think what it comes down to is that just be the friend that you wish you had, right? Like have look at the qualities that you're hoping to get uh, from other people, be those things to other people. And what you will find out is that you'll have the qualities in a person that you hope to date and hopefully maybe end up eventually marry one day. Like, how do I know this? I know this because like, that's what happened with me and my wife. My wife, Kristen, um, who's awesome, we actually were, we were friends for four years before we even started dating. Yeah, you heard that right, four Years. She put me in the friend zone for four years before we even started dating. Four years it took her to realize that there's a sweet piece of man candy standing right in front of her, and she opened her eyes and realized how awesome I am. Right now, I'm just kidding. Um, but in reality, I really was in the friendship zone for like four. If you don't know what that is, ask a girl. They all know how to do it, okay? And so just let them know. But here's the thing is not only that were we friends for four years uh, before that, we dated for four years. And these are the qualities that I've seen in her um, as we're kind of like navigating in our relationship now that, that, man, I see these things in her and that's what draw me, drew me to her. And that's what I've worked on these things in my own life. And that's what also in turn drew uh, me to her. And so when we begin to navigate through all these things, I, I think that it helps us in a, a better and healthy dating relationship. And, you know, I want to preface, like, I'm not, we're not perfect, right? Like, there's a, still a lot of th things that we need to work on. There's a lot of things that we still need to work through. But I do feel like if we did not focus on ourselves first and became the right person instead of finding the right person, is that our marriage, our dating would have been a lot more unhealthy. It would have been a lot more uh, struggles would have come out of that. So if you want to become the person that you're looking for is looking for, here's a couple of things that I want you to, to consider and to be challenged with on how to develop healthy friendships now to help with better dating and future marriage later, okay? So here it is. Number one, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Uh, invest in others. I think one of the most important things you can do in any relationship, not even just a, a romantic relationship, but just any relationship is to invest in others. See, deep friendships are not accidental. Deep friendships are not accidental. They are a choice. They are not instant. They take a lot of time, energy, effort, right? These are the things that like, this is how you invest in others is that, and create these deep, meaningful relationships and it takes a little bit of time, is that you invest into other people. See, I had a friend in high school um, and everyone in our friend group called him Will C. Um, and we would invite him to something and, because he would always say, well, we'll see, right? Like that's kind of like what, because he, he always wanted to check his options and make sure there's nothing better happening. That's not a good friend. That's not a reliable friend to come in to a relationship. That's not someone that we trusted or that chose to invest in us as a friendship. And, and Philippians 2, 4, it says, don't look out only for your own interests, but take interests in others too. See, the key to quality friendship is selflessness, okay? Not selfishness, selflessness, Nobody has ever said to me, man, like Justin, uh, Justin's such a good friend. He's so interested in himself all the time. Like no one's ever said that to me ever. Instead, like what we want to get is like, man, Justin's such a good friend because he's always there when I need him. He's always investing into who I am. See, one of my favorite quotes um, is 80% of success is just showing up, 
right? Like that's kind of, it is just, just to show up, that a good friend shows up, they invest into that person, and a good friend cares about you and your interests. Think about this when it comes to dating. This is good boyfriend, girlfriend material, is you're investing into them. You're showing up for things um, uh, of, of value to that person. Second thing I want you to write down when it comes to developing healthy friendships for, for future dating or marriage relationships is that you need to, we need to earn trust. We need to earn their trust. So you talk, you talk to your acquaintances, you spend time with your casual friends, but you trust your really good friends, right? That, that we wanna begin to earn this trust. See, I had this friend, and we'll just call him R, just for the sake of this, because he might be watching. Who knows if what happens, right? We'll call him R, but he, he would always go around to the girls that I would tell him that I would be interested in, and he would try to talk them out of being interested in me because he was trying to swoop in on them. That's not a good friend. That's not how you gain trust with people. Um, needless to say, R was not a really good friend. And let's just, like, if, if you want to be real, I'm okay with that because when, when Kristen, my wife, broke up with R, I swooped in and now we're married and, and have two kids, right? So that's like kind of, I won on that one, right? So like, that's not how you earn the trust when it comes to that, um, is that you want to, to be there. You want to invest in them and you want to earn their trust. In Proverbs 20, uh, verse six, it says, many will say, they are loyal friends, but who can find one who is truly reliable, right? That's a really, that's a really good, thoughtful question when it comes to like, who, how many of us have good, reliable friends? See, Proverbs tells us that it's very difficult to find someone who that you could really, really trust, that you could share and be open and honest and to be real with. And so when it comes to like earning trust, you earn trust by telling the truth, even when it's not easy sometimes. It's about being reliable, that you're always there to be that counted on, is that it's keeping confidences, it's like meaning not sharing things that people tell you, that you could be trusted with this, because here's the thing, is that it takes years to build up trust in, in a relationship, but it takes one poor decision to destroy it. And so, like, and so when I think about stuff like this, like gossip, right? It's talking about other people behind their backs. See, Proverbs 11, uh, verse 12 and 13 says, it is foolish to belittle one's neighbor, a sensible person keeps quiet. A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. Think about in any relationship, not only just like dating relationships, but like any relationship. The moment that you start spreading stuff around to other people is the moment you lose trust with that person. And you can't have a healthy relationship without this idea of trust. See, if someone has gossiped about you to others, about others, um, you can bet that they're gossiping about you to other people. Right, like this is kind of a think about it. If they're gossiping to you about other people, you know that when you're not around that they're probably gossiping to you, about you to other people, okay? Third thing I want you to write down when it comes to healthy friendships that we need to know and understand in order to have healthy future relationships um, is that we need to listen to others. I think we need to listen. Part of any kind of relationship, think about just even dating, right? Uh, if, if that's like, if you're in a dating spot, like listening to your significant other, that's a really big deal. Listening to your really good friends, that's a really big deal. See, I'm sure you've heard that it's been said that listening is different than hearing. That listening is different than hearing. That a good friend actually takes time to listen, not just wait for their turn to talk. You ever know those people that you know as you're talking to them, they're, they're trying to like get their word in edgewise because they just wanna keep on saying something, right? That they're not listening, they're just waiting for you to shut up so that way they can tell you what they're thinking or what their point is or whatever, right? That's not, that's not uh, l listening to other people. See, and this could be difficult because we are sinful people who are inherently selfish. You know who everyone's favorite subject is? Themselves, right? Like we love to talk about ourselves. We love to boast about ourselves. We love to speak into all those other things. And we have to fight the desire to talk about ourselves rather than listen to the needs of other people. That's hard. That's a really hard thing sometimes. See, listening is something that we actually need to learn. Listen, learn how to do. We need to learn how to listen well. See, in James 1, verse 19, it says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. See, I found that the quicker, when we we're quicker uh, that we are to listen, the easier it is, easy, it's easier to be slow to speak, and in turn, it's easier, to, it's slow to get angry. See, I think most of our anger really does stem from and comes from our inability to listen 
and understand one another. Think about any of the, the frustrations you've had in relationships. Most of the time it's because you don't understand and it's because someone wasn't listening in the process. And so to, to have healthy relationships, have healthy friendships, for you to be a good friend and have any sort of relationship with anybody, part of that is listening and understanding and learning how what that looks like. See, when you listen, you listen for the emotions behind the words, right? Like you could ask someone and say, hey, how are you doing? And they say, fine, but their body language doesn't seem fine or they, they seem sad. And that you, if you're actively, actively listening, you're able to be there for them in a way that you wouldn't have if you weren't aware and learning how to listen to others. See, when you listen to someone's burdens, you ask yourself, man, what would I feel like in that situation? And you're learning how to listen to them because you, in turn, develop deeper friendships and relationships because of that. And the last thing I wanna share with you is number four of how to have healthy friendships. If you could work on having this in your own friendships and you could be this person, it's to be there for the good times and the bad times, right? It's to be there for the good and it's to be there for the bad. See, those who have friends who do this will find good time, their good times to be multiplied and their bad times to be divided. So what do I mean by this? Is that the good times are even better because you have good friends, you've been there, you shared it, you're able to celebrate, right? Because when you're excited about something and you're celebrating, don't you go like, isn't it better to do it with a group of people? Right, isn't it better to celebrate and have everybody like high-fiving or whatever because you are celebrating something? But then also at the bad times, they don't seem as bad because you have your friends who have, you've been celebrating with that they're there with you in the bad times as well. And so when, you could, when we could be better friends in the good times and also be there for people in the bad times, it, literally, it helps share each other's burdens and it helps us deepen our relationships even more. In Romans 12, 15, it says, be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. I mean, it's pretty simple. That's a pretty, like, there's no gray area around that. It's literally when celebrate with people are celebrating and then weep and be there with people when they're sad, when they're hurting, when they're frustrated. See, so celebrate the good things that happen to others without being jealous, without being envious, or without being critical. That you can, If you could celebrate the happiness of other people, you will be happy your entire life right? Because you're constantly celebrating with them. You're, you're joining them in their celebration because there's always something to celebrate. There's always something to be happy about in someone else's life because even if God, even if you feel like God is not moving in your own, you could celebrate that God is moving in someone else's, right? And so that, this, there's, there's moments for us where this deepens our relationship. See, and here's the thing. Now, it's a lot easier to celebrate with someone than it is to stand by someone who's hurting. It's way easier because when someone's hurting, some of us, you know, you don't know what to say. It's like kind of, like I remember my wife would always make fun of me when we were dating and she was upset I'd, and she'd be like crying or something and I'd be like, it's okay. You know, like I, I don't know what to do right now. You know what I mean? Like, because for a guy, a crying girl, is, there's nothing scarier, right? Like when you're going into that situation, we don't know what to do sometimes. And so I, I was talking to a guy student this, this past month who was really frustrated, didn't understand how this girl that he liked didn't s seem to care for him or to be there for him in this really difficult time in his life. See, sometimes we avoid those who are hurting because we aren't sure how we could help. We aren't sure what to say. And I'll tell you that those who have helped me during the most painful times in my own life, um, they were just simply there. You don't have to say nothing. You don't have to do much. You don't have to worry about finding the right words. Like they were just simply there with me through it. They just showed up, they walked through it with me and they just listened. See, students like in this whole thing when it comes to dating, when it comes to future marriage, marriages, my prayer for your life is not that you graduate high school with a great boyfriend or girlfriend. That's not my goal. My goal, my prayer is that you graduate with one or two really good friends friends that you could be real with, friends that you could be honest with, friends that you could have a deep relationship with, and that if you have these four things and you work on these four things in your own life about being that friend, is that you will see you will have healthier relationships in the future. The Bible doesn't say that you can't make it through life without a significant other, but the Bible does say that you can't make it through life without good friends. And so this is what I want us to focus on, that, that we need at least a, a couple quality friends that will validate you about who you are, that they will seek to improve you and your life, and that, that who will pray for you, 
in the times, the good times and the bad times, that when we begin to focus on these things, we, I'm telling you, we will see healthier dating and healthier marriages in the future because you started to invest in your friendships now. And so this is what my challenge to you, those four things. My question is, which ones do you need to work on? Which ones do you know that you need to adjust in your life to be a better friend? That you need to adjust in your life so that way you could be uh, the person that you're looking for is looking for. And so right now your youth host is gonna come up and they're gonna close out the rest of our night and we're gonna dismiss into groups here in a little bit. We'll see you.